Hello, my loop friends. Welcome to Live Loopers. I'm Alex, and today we are talking about one of my favorite things, Loopy Pro modules. And specifically, we're talking about when to use them and when not to use them. When I very first discovered that it was possible to take a audio unit of Loopy Pro and open it inside of regular standalone Loopy Pro, and in so doing, make a little section of Loopy Pro screen that could just stay there even when you switch pages to different pages. Uh, first of all, I got very, very happy. But uh, also, one of the first things I wanted to do with that was to take my finger drumming pads that I have put since the very beginning with Loopy Pro and see if I could just put them on a screen so that instead of needing a whole page for finger drumming, I could just have like one button and I could pop up a Loopy Pro module and have a finger drumming pads and then pop it down when I don't need it. And then I could put that button on like every page, whatever page it might be conceivable that I might need finger drumming pads for. Really? It's true. That was my first ever Loopy Pro module idea and it continues to be the best. It's just the first, the best, the, I use it all the time and some of the great things about it are it doesn't need a lot of coding, it's not complicated to install, it's just a sound generator that just plays samples. You just make a button, touch the button, makes a sound. Easy peasy. I love it. This appearing on your screen right now, not uh, the top one. Close that for a second. But this bottom one is how my finger drumming module has evolved. This is how it looks nowadays. And if it looks a little bit complicated, it's a tiny bit complicated. It's not that complicated. But uh, it looks even more complicated than it. It doesn't need to be all this even. But I just like it. I have a whole video on the Loopy Pro drum module, so I'm not gonna restate everything. I'm just gonna right quick explain that there are 16 buttons along the side. They are all red and they are all just one shot clips. And uh, they each contain a sound sample. And then there are 16 colored pads in the middle of various sizes and they are uh, labeled and very nice to read and understand what they are and those are just copies of the other 16. Why do I put them twice? Uh, because when you just put a one shot on the screen it is a touch and hold and it is possible to change the settings so that it is a one shot and you just touch it and it plays a whole sample. Rather than do that, I'm like, hey, why not have both options? And so the red ones on the side are just sort of uh, touch and hold. And the ones in the middle are the ones I'm more often using. And they are, uh, you just touch them once and they play the whole sample all the way through. That is a great use for a Loopy Pro module, and if you want to get this specific uh, Live Loopers drum module, liveloopers.com uh, slash goodies, or just go to liveloopers.com and uh, click over to the goodies tab, and uh, on the modules page, drum module. The second idea I had was, hey, I am going to take all of these different uh, Loopy Pro instruments, all these audio units that I play, and instead of having them in my standalone, I'm just going to uh, pop them up inside of a module, and uh, then I won't need like tons of different modules in order to have different packages of instruments. I could just, uh, you know, I could have I could just package them in all different kinds of combinations and just pop up the one I want at any given time, wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool, uh, but it's just not doable uh, because uh, on an iPad and iOS, an audio unit cannot open up another audio unit inside of it. it just doesn't work. So if you uh, take a Loopy Pro module and try to open any of your AUV3s inside of it, 
mm -mm, it's a no-go. Uh, so, uh, that is a place where you can't use a Looper Pro module, and I was very disheartened to find out I saw my dreams smash into a million pieces, but you just can't do it. I will take you to the last page of my current template to show you something. Uh, this is my uh, template switcher. It switches uh, between my 16 different, I call them moods. A lot of loopers that use Loopy Pro, uh, they set up a different template for each of their different songs. It's working for you. Awesome. Uh, for me, I am an improviser and I love to just improvise all kinds of things, not just an improviser, but a rapper, so uh, my lyrics and performances of songs are not dependent on different melodies. I just like to have 16 different what I call moods, and each different mood contains different sound samples based on that mood and different packages of instruments based on that mood, that kind of thing. So uh, these are my 16 different moods, and I thought, Hey, a great idea would be to take this little switcher page and put it inside of a module. So I started doing that and it looked great. Um, it looks great sitting there inside of a little module and you just pop up that module and you press on the button that you want it to go to. It takes uh, a bit of coding just to get it started. Uh, you have to take 16 different MIDI program change codes, assign one to each of the 16 different moods. The problem was uh, it did not uh, stay contained. It just spaghettied out and just became more and more unwieldy. Yeah, I don't even know exactly how to explain what happened to that, but sometimes you will take uh, an idea for a Loopy Pro module and you will find out at some point that it just isn't worth having it in a module. What is required to get it into a module ends up being more, way more work than just putting it in the template. That was the case in point for me on this thing, and so now I just have these 16 different copies of the page switcher on all 16 different moods. Um, it seems like it, there should be some kind of a way to make it be less work, but for me, like making it change colors based on which one you're on and having other things where it's individualized made it just so, oh, no. Um, yeah. Yeah. One thing that has worked out, even though it took a lot of coding also, like some things are like, you know, big ideas and they might take a while to bring them to fruition, but uh, sometimes if you keep plugging away, you'll get some awesome result. Such is the case with uh, my Playtime module, which I just absolutely love. Playtime! For any given audio unit, uh, you can pop it up onto the screen, and when you pop it up onto the screen, there's a little uh, keyboard thingy up top in your Loopy Pro bar across the top, and you press it, and then the keyboard pops up, and that keyboard now has a nice handy transpose. And, uh, so that makes it a very nice playable keyboard, but I still have always felt that there just has to be more and better options than just this standard keyboard roll. Uh, this keyboard is pretty good, this Loopy Pro keyboard. Uh, it lets you do some things. You can unlock it and you can squeeze and it's just, oh, it's, it's, it's nice. Uh, but I always wanted some other options and so I have Playtime module it gives me more options. So uh, this is a thing called fifths, which is organized into a right angle tonnets chart. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on what that is, but it's just an easier way to play. And uh, it says fifths because uh, when I press this D key, not only will it play a D, but it'll play a fifth up from a D. And every single key is like that. It plays whatever the note name is and a fifth up. So. And I have uh, inversions, which inversions are just all kinds of fun. 
and I have major scales, and I have minor scales, and, you know, fun stuff. That is the Playtime module, also available on LiveLoopers.com. Uh, I love that one. And so lastly, I would like to show you my newest uh, little one, my, my newest little big module that I've been loving for the past few days since I made it. Um, so uh, I had that Playtime module, and when I first made the Playtime module, uh, I thought, hey, I could just put some sliders right on the instrument module and uh, make it so that like I can have like a pitch wheel and make it so that I can have uh, basically any effect that uh, Koala, I just plugged it right into uh, Koala effects and like so any Koala effects effect uh, that I have access to, I just could put a slider on the playtime module screen right there so I could press a key and then I could like slide the slider and like maybe you know add reverb or add delay you know in real time as I'm playing music that was fun and when I would really get into it uh, I found that sometimes I could like you know press a G key and then be sliding some reverb up onto it and then take the little slicer cutter effect and like with the second finger I could just be you know slicing into it and you know maybe if I'm really lucky I can get a third finger and you know uh, it, was, it was getting a little bit with the manual dexterity uh, but then what happened was that I discovered velocity keyboard which is a very fun uh, very fun note input mode audio unit where it looks like this and you can uh, stack layers and layers of uh, piano rolls on top of each other and get lots and lots of rows so that you can um, simulate playing up and down a long keyboard. You don't have to be trapped into like two octaves or anything. You can play like all the way up and down and just... But then uh, I was like, oh, but now I wish I had my sliders on that thing. Cause uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to press those keys and also have the Koala effects sliders? And um, you can't just sort of like staple some Loopy Pro widgets into an existing audio unit. It it, it won't take them. Whatever, man. So what I have done is I just uh, deleted those sliders out of the playtime module and put them in their separate little own module with, uh, well, the first thing I did, first thing I did was just make it so that whenever I popped up Velocity Keyboard, it would also pop up uh, Koala Effects. So that looked like this. Every time I would pop up uh, Velocity Keyboard, there would be this little tiny copy of Koala Effects. That works. I could do that. Um, I would play the notes and then I could uh, slide effects around uh, if I wanted to. And I got to be competent at that. It was nice. Um, but the problem is, uh, you know, my eyesight bad. And so Koala Effects, it is uh, designed to be very readable. Look at it when it's full size. Very readable. You can read all of that. It's it's great. Uh, but when you try to crunch it down into this tiny size, not so much. Uh, so yeah, I was having a lot of difficulty reading that and I was wanting to still be able to use it. And uh, so what it did was just take those playtime sliders and uh, just got rid of all of this and just made uh, a very new uh, Koala FX uh, uh, control module where I started using XY grades. When Loopy Pro first came out tried using the XY grids and they were a little bit buggy and they wouldn't do 
exactly what I wanted them to do when I was having some kind of trouble and so I just stopped using them and I was like, I'll just use that later when they work better. And then I forgot and I never really went back to it until now. Uh, this application right here, I was like, oh, let me see if I uh, put some XY grids in, what'll happen? What happened was, uh, it was awesome. Uh, when I use individual sliders, then I need one finger for each slider. If I use an XY grid, I can control two effects parameters with one finger. So uh, now I can do twice as much, you know, or use half as many fingers, however you want to say it. Uh, so I just looked for which effects would work well together in combination and package those into some XY grids. And so now you have uh, all of these awesome things where you can just uh, play a note and just use one grid and do all kinds of cool effects. And I have been having a ball with that. Uh, it's still experimental and it's still in the prototype. Uh, if anybody wants to get an uh, advanced copy of it now, uh, you can come on the Discord server. And uh, there's a new channel, thanks to Cigaretto, suggesting that we make a channel like this for uh, putting modules. And so, uh, yeah, you can come get a copy and ask any questions and get help installing or whatever. Uh, if you found this video useful, one thing that you could do that would be really helpful would be to leave a like on the video because that helps more people to see the video. Or you could directly like share it with some people that you think would want to see it. That would be cool. Uh, if you feel like talking about looping things and you want to be subscribed to the channel so that you see future videos, feel free to do so. It's free. Uh, and uh, also, loop on. That's it. That's just loop on.